end of the day. But uh, anyway, we've always been there in June. We've never been there in the, in the winter months. Hi everybody, AG6AG. This video shows interfacing WSJTX with N1MM. Uh, this is really great if you're going to run FT4 or FT8 uh, during a contest that allows it and have it directly go into the N1MM contest log. So with that, no further ado. Oh, and if you have any questions or comments, please make them down below and don't forget to subscribe. Hi everybody, this is Stu, AG6AG. We're going to go through the setup of WSJT and N1MM to work together in a contest. At field day in particular. Um couple of things I'm assuming, actually three. The first thing I'm assuming is that you've already installed N1MM. Uh, the second thing I'm assuming is you've already configured uh, communications between your radio and N1MM. The third thing I'm assuming is that you've already installed WSJT and understand how to use it. All right, so if any of those things aren't true, look back in my uh, video history. You should be able to find all those things. Uh, now, at no further ado, let's get started on this. So, if you've been working with WXJTX at all, you know that there's a bunch of settings and everything that you've made. You've got your configuration all set up, you know, where your logs are, all that stuff. You've probably gone through that whole learning experience. Well, that's going to change a little bit. Um, N1MM wants to control how you use, basically, the software. Uh, when I say the software, any software that you're utilizing with it, such as WSJT or FL Digi, doesn't matter. It wants to control it. So we have to set it up kind of as a slave to N1MM. What we're going to do is we're going to go to config and we're going to go to configure ports, mode control, win key, etc., etc., etc. And I'm going to go under here under my rig set. And if you look here, I need to check these two boxes. I need to check uh, PTT via radio command SBB mode or SSB mode. And PTT via radio command digital mode, just like that. All right. Now, I'm going to say OK. There we go. I am going to go over to digital modes. And see, I don't need to be there. Let me go to mode control. And I'm going to go ahead and say use contest uh, or radio mode. Actually, let's use contest, uh, yeah. And I am going to select for RITI on my particular radio. I'm going to be using AFSK minus R. Your radio may be different. You need to kind of figure out how to set that up. What this does is this makes sure that it goes into the right data mode when I switch over to it. Uh, it helps the radio make the right command. Um, let's go ahead and, uh, oh, well, one other thing here, if you want to just completely uh, uh, kind of blow it off a little bit, uh, then you can uh, set these to no change, okay, um, like so. And that way you can set everything up on your radio. Might make it a little easier for you. I happen to like the advantage of being able to do this, and I usually preset my stuff to work. So anyway, uh, let's see. Uh, from here, I'm going to go over to the WSJT uh, JTDX setup. I'm going to enable uh, this listening port for radio 1 on port 2237. And down here, when it talks about the uh, first radio, since I only have one radio set up, it's the only one I can click set. From here, I'm going to go in and locate the executable for WSJTX. So 
I know that mine's installed under the C drive, under the WSJT directory, under the WSJTX directory, under the bin directory, and it is WSJTX is the executable. I'm going to select it and say OK. Now, looks like we're just about done. So I'm going to click OK and I'm going to close my program. Why am I doing that? Well, I made some network port changes and some other things. So it's just always a good idea when you make port changes and things like that to do that. Now, I am going to go over here now that I've relaunched it. I'm going to go to Window, and the bottom choice is load WSJT uh, JTDX. I'm going to click Load. And it's going to load this thing up. And you notice that I've got the splash screen here. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of the splash screen. Just click on it. I want to go to File, and I want to go to Settings. All right, now I want you to notice something. I did not move the main window. Do you know why? There's a bug. If I move that main window, it may crash. And if it crashes, then i got to start all over. It's a big mess. So, um, AG, 6AG for my call. Remember, all your settings are not in here anymore. Uh, uh, I shouldn't say that. They're still there. Trust me. We haven't deleted any settings, actually. What this is is a completely different settings group. And it's specific to WSJTX uh, talking with N1MM. So all the stuff that you had is still there. It's not gone. All right. So let me get through this. This is fairly straightforward. Now, you probably have the ways you like to set this up. Uh, let's see. And, and we all have our own little thing. I like to display distance in miles. Um, I like to show uh, DXCC grid when it's working. Uh, let's see. Uh, double click to enable transmit. I do that. You just go down through through here and you know click the ones that you typically have set, um, and uh, make any of the settings that are important to you. Um, for your radio, though, we're going to be picky. Normally, when you set this up, you'd set it up for cat control, right? But you know what? Com ports don't share well. So since N1MM has control of your COM port for CAT, we're going to do a little bit of manic, magic. We're going to select DXLAB Suite Commander. We're going to change this to CAT, and that's all we're going to do. We're not going to change anything else. So DXLAB Suite Commander, we're going to change it to CAT. And here's the most important thing. We don't want to start. If we own DXLAB Suite Commander, we don't want to run it. We don't want it running at all. We're just using it as a fake communication channel between um, N1MM and WSJTX. Uh, now, once I've done that, and like I said, I've only selected over here, I've only selected DX Lab Suite Commander, and I've only selected CAT. That's it. I've changed nothing else. Let me hit test. Now, if everything's set up right, hopefully, we're going to come back. Will you look at that? There we go. We came back with a green test, so we're good. Now, we're going to change our audio. My audio, I happen to know, is my microphone USB audio codec for my input and the same for my output. There it is, speakers, USB audio codec. That's all I need to do there. I'm not going to mess with my uh, TX macros. However, under here, under reporting, I want to accept UDP requests. And who am I accepting them from? Look at that, 127.1.0.0.12237. Remember, we enabled that earlier. So, uh, yeah, that's a, that's a big deal right there. Let me fix a couple things here. One second. There we go. Now, once I have that, the rest of this should all be programmed in. Oh, you know what? I do want it to prompt me to log. Okay, that's typically the right thing to do. 
Um, and uh, let's see, I like it to clear my DX call and grid after logging. Uh, but, you know, maybe in a contest you don't want to do that to confirm after you get that received. So we'll just leave it there. I just want to prompt it to log. All right. Now, um, I go to advanced, and this is where I get to set it up for special operating. I'm going to say ARL field day. My exchange is going to be to Echo Santa Barbara. Now I'll click OK. All right. Now. Now, I can start moving stuff. This is real important, too. In an actual contest, it's going to be jumping around, doing different things. You're going to have different things happening here. A um, good example is, let's do a AB6ET over here. Um, what, uh, what actually, when these things are properly talking, it's going to send this stuff. It's going to do all sorts of stuff. So uh, I need to kind of rearrange these windows a little bit. One thing I know is that I'm not going to need the band map. I can use this if I want it. I can move this back over here, move this over here. And uh, I can do anything with the graph that I might want. But I can adjust this out however I want it, uh, make it bigger or smaller or whatever. Um, you know, change, uh, change my settings a little bit to get more of a realistic uh, view of what's going on here. Uh, let's see. Uh, we can. Get rid of some of the averaging. Little things like that. I mean, looks like we're a little hot. Eh, not really, but it looks a little... There we go. Oh, and of course, we want to tell it to go ahead and work on FT8. And then we have a new contest log -a jigger over here. All right, that actually looks a little better. And if we notice, it's changed our radio. And look at that. Boy, we've got some stuff out there. So this is working. We probably want to check our tune. Let's see uh, what happens when I hit tune, if it puts out a tone. Why, yes, it does. That's actually perfect. Oh, so a couple small things, right? We have this log here. I'm going to move this out of the way. Now, this is a lot easier on a dual monitor setup, but you don't actually have to have one. I'm going to go to Window, and I'm going to tell it to show me the WSJ decode window. Oh, and by the way, this little box here, you need to keep it open. But you see, now that I've opened this WJTX uh, window here, Look at this. We've got color coding on the people that are calling CQ. So that makes it a little bit easier. And of course, all of our macros, everything else are all going to work the same. If I want to call CQ, it's going to say CQ field day because I've specified field day. All this stuff is going to work. It's going to show uh, all the latest stuff separated by two colors over, uh, um, over on the map over here. So it's fairly straightforward. And, you know, uh, let's go ahead and we'll close this up. We have to wait for this little box to disappear. And this box will disappear, too, all by itself, supposedly. Might take a minute or so. There it goes. Now we're safe to do whatever we want. And now we can actually go in and we can actually operate under normal circumstances, single sideband or whatever. We're going to do one more thing here. I'm going to go to Configure Ports. I'm going to go back over here to the WSJ, and I'm going to say to auto-load this. Again, all my stuff looks good. I'm going to click OK. I'm going to exit out of everything one more time because it's always a good idea to restart it. Let's go ahead and launch it in 1MM. It's going to remember... Windows over here, a little bit funkier to use, but you know what? We want them out of the way because we don't want them popping up over our main windows. Uh, I'm going to go to Window, and I'm going to load WSJT. I'm going to tell it, don't auto-load that. All right. So now we're actually in reasonable mode. 
Now, let's see if we're decoding. So if I double click on this and then I'm going to halt my transmit. Okay, so I don't actually transmit back to him because I just wanted to show if you look over here, look at what's over in this window over here. Okay, it's gone ahead and it's grabbed that information. And when you make your QSO, it's all going to work. It's all going to go where it's supposed to go. And that's what's really cool. This up here, it's all going to be in there. When you save the QSO to the log, you'll have a box pop up to save the QSO up here. When you do that, when you do that right there, you're done. It automatically logs it and you're set to go. And again, all you have to do to get out of the program, close WSJT, wait, be patient, wait for the WSJTX decode list to close. It'll do it over here. You'll see it. That box will go away. Now everything should work the way it should. Okay. And we can reposition our windows or do whatever we want to do here. I certainly can change back to normal data mode, or no, excuse me, normal mode, which I'll do uh, via the radio. And there we are. All right? That easy, guys. That's all it takes. So uh, I hope you caught it all. Any questions or comments, make them down below. And please subscribe. We'll talk to you soon. Well, that's it. Hope you liked it. Make your questions or comments down below, and don't forget to subscribe. This is Stu, AG6AG, saying 73, and we'll hear you out on the air.